So to me, when we think about graphing lines, uh, what's the first, anytime you think about graphing a line, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? What's the first thing that you hear in the back of your head when you think about graphing lines and equations for lines? It's also the, the topic, the subject of the, the question of the day, the top voted question of the day. So the first thing we think about, because we've already thought about this in chapter seven, is we think about points. And let me go back to the question that Emma asked earlier. How many points does it take to determine a straight line? It takes, yeah, it takes two or more points to determine a straight line, right? If I know, for example, that I want to draw a line from where I'm standing here to you know, the, that corner of the classroom. That's enough information for me in what's called Euclidean geometry to uniquely determine one line that takes me from point A to point B. So one of the first skills that we want to build in this section is the ability to take those two points and to determine from those two points an equation for the line that connects those two points together. So this is probably the universal skill in this entire section, is to take those two points and determine an equation. So now is when I get to ask the question, what kind of equation do you typically think of when trying to determine an equation for a line? What is the prototype, the template, that every algebra class drills into your head for a line? Y equals mx plus b, exactly. You can get a lot of mileage out of that form of equation, y equals mx plus b. And we, of course, today get to talk about how to use that equation. But remembering that this is the kind of equation that can describe for us an equation for a line is half the battle. We know that this is the kind of equation that we're working towards at the end of the day. Now, this equation has a particular form when what, we, what we're trying to do in order to use this equation is we're trying to find the values of this mysterious m and this mysterious b. If we can figure out what m and b are, then all we have to do is just put the players in their places, and we have an equation for this line. So tell me about this m and this b. First of all, about the b. Um, what is b? What does b represent in this equation? So b stands for the y-intercept. And so that's an important piece of information to know about a line is its y-intercept. So I'm going to put that in its own little call out over here. y-intercept is one piece of information that we might need to know about a line. It's often called b, and if we can find b, then we know what to put in that spot in this equation. So a y-intercept is, <coughs> it goes by the name b. So that's for that part. Um, that's the b. What's the m? stand for in this equation? Is there? The slope. M stands for slope, which is probably the most important new concept in this whole conversation. So it's deserving also of its own separate box over here. So the slope is what we'll call M. And if I happen to have the slope and the intercept of a line that I'm trying to define an equation for, that's enough information for me then to determine this equation for the line. And for that reason, this form of an equation for a line is often called the slope-intercept equation for that line. Um, the fact that I put a little y up here also reminds us that the intercept that this is talking about is the y-intercept. It's the place where this graph intersects the y-axis. So, so far we have two skills listed up here. The first is the, the overall skill, the most important one that we want to come away from today with which is how do we determine an equation for a line if we know two points that lie along that line? This is the most important skill to be able to do. And we know that this equation requires us to find two pieces of information. It requires us to find the slope of that line, and it requires us to find the y-intercept of that line. Because as soon as we have the slope and we have the y-intercept, then we know what to do with them. We just place them into this template. And so, of course, what we really need to figure out how to do is how to take these side steps. Specifically, how, given two points, to determine the slope of the line that connects those two points. So we've got to figure that out. Um, we also need to figure out 
If one of those points is not already the y-intercept itself, how do we find the y-intercept um, using that information? So I'm going to add that in here as another line. Kind of trying to diagram out everything that we need to do today. So rather than try to make this one leap all in one big step, instead, typically what happens is something that looks more like this. We have two points. Ultimately, we want to find an equation for the line that joins those two points. So the first thing we do is use those two points to find a slope. And then once we know the slope, we'll use that slope to find the y-intercept. And then we have the slope and the y-intercept that we need to get our slope-intercept equation. So rather than have this be one big step, um, it's made up of a series of smaller steps. And those smaller steps lead us to the slope-intercept equation for this line. But the slope-intercept equation for a line is also a two-way street. In addition to asking you to produce an equation, I'm also interested that you're able to read an equation, to look at an equation for a line and tell me important pieces of information about that line using its equation. So in addition to using a slope to help determine an equation, I also want that to go the other way as well, to read off of a slope-intercept equation what is the slope of that equation. Same thing with the y-intercept, that you also be able to go backwards. Given a slope-intercept equation, tell me what the y-intercept is. So those are both two-way streets over here. Last and certainly not least, um, it's maybe a little bit less important than a slope-intercept equation, but there's another form of equation for a line besides y equals mx plus b. It doesn't get as much press in beginning algebra courses, um, but it gives us a good opportunity to use some of our other algebra skills. It's called the standard form, the standard equation of a line. The standard form of an equation reads ax plus by equals c. So it just looks a little different. It doesn't have the y by itself on one side the way that slope-intercept does. And yet an equation that takes that form also describes a straight line, just like a slope-intercept equation does. So if someone gives you an equation for a line in its standard form and asks you a question about that line, then in order to answer that question, typically what we do is just convert that equation from its standard form into slope-intercept form. So all that's going to happen over there is just anytime you get a standard equation, you're just going to convert it into a slope-intercept equation in order to answer any question that you might have about it. So this is kind of our concept map for all the kinds of information that we might have. Um, or maybe, eh, I suppose the, the biggest, most important thing I should add to it is the graph of the line itself. Graph of the line. Because I would like to, for example, be able to use the slope and intercept of a linear equation to come up with its graph. Right? To use a graph, or use a slope and the y-intercept to determine a graph. Or equivalently, I could use two points to determine a graph. And then occasionally, we might also want to go backwards from the graph of a line, read off two of its points. Because ultimately, again, the most important set of skills in this section, the one that's going to cover all of your bases, are the skills to, first of all, go from two given points to a slope-intercept equation for the line that joins those two points. And then conversely, also to go in between the, uh, an equation for a line and the graph of that line. So those are going to be our two main objectives for today.